Hey everybody, Sam Kavaris in the Nimnik Chevrolet video sports update. So the Jaguars win again back-to-back -back games now three and one in the second half. And while three wins does not a season make, you still have to think of it as okay, Gus Bradley getting his feet wet, players figuring out where the stadium is, uh, what he wants, what Dave Caldwell expects, how they fit into the system, all the roster changes that they made in the first four weeks, and then kind of moving up to that bye week after, after London. And now you can see a couple of positive things are happening. The young team is learning how to win, and that's a very important thing. If you keep these guys together and they move forward together, they learn how to win together, and I think that that's a very important thing, particularly in the defensive backfield. These guys are learning. And remember, when, um, when Josh Gordon caught that 95-yard touchdown pass, very easily they all could have gone, that's good enough, let's go home, it's too cold. But instead, sucked it up and made a difference. Now, Cecil Shorts, who has made us look at him differently when he asked for the football more. We all thought he was a good, not very good, not great, but a good receiver who would be an excellent number two guy with somebody else as the number one guy. Well, that somebody else isn't on the team anymore for now, and Shorts became the number one guy and didn't think he was getting the ball thrown to him enough. You know how you get the ball thrown to you? A, get open. B, catch it. And for 98% of the game in Cleveland, he was neither or doing neither. But he makes the one great move and excellent catch, although I would have liked to see that toe tap in the end zone, which is what the number one receiver should do. Catch the ball with his hands, toe tap in the end zone, so there's no question that that thing's a touchdown. Nonetheless, it was a touchdown, and the Jaguars end up winning. So they're learning how to win together, and they move forward through the second half of the season trying to build momentum as they move forward. So who they got left? Well, they got the Texans coming up Thursday night, obviously, who they beat, who are now the worst team in the league with the worst record. Hard to beat a team two times in 11 days, I can tell you that. But um, certainly, they, you know, they have a chance. Play against uh, Buffalo here, chance. Indianapolis on the road, uh, kind of a tough game, particularly since Indy will probably be fighting for a, a playoff spot, and that's the last game of the year. What's the other home game? You remember? I'm trying to think. Nonetheless, uh, the, the Jaguars with, you know, three home games in a row. Titans. Oh, Tennessee comes here. That's right. So another, another winnable game. I hate to call them that, but, you know, from a fan standpoint, media standpoint, those are winnable, those are winnable games. So if the Jaguars in the second half of the season do something like go oh, four and four or five and three, I mean, they're building some momentum for next year. There's no question that they're still outgunned and overmanned in a lot of situations, but um, at least – the message, which Gus Bradley calls a pure message, and I agree, I agree with that. It's a, it's a message that, um, that is talking about working it from the inside out and having the guys play for each other and have the leadership come within rather than from on the top. Uh, we'll see what happens, but it looks a little bit encouraging. Florida State should play in the national championship game. They, they play Duke Saturday in the ACC title game and should win that. And uh, who they play? Could be Ohio State, but after seeing the Seminoles play, they're pretty good. I mean, maybe not as good as some people think they are, but they're pretty darn good, and they've got some veteran players on the team. We'll talk about that coming up uh, as we get a little closer. For now, that's the Nimnik Chevrolet video sports update.